going to take another webinar on this mating practices of ductile line. So let us start the slideshow. As we all know, ductile line is known with various names like the giant spheroidal graphite iron, nodular iron. As nodules are round in shape, it is also called as nodular iron. So these are the various names. Physical properties, as we all know, uh, the strength and elongation is there. We'll go in details in future slides. As it is shown in this slide, it is 600 by 3, 400 by 15, 600 by 3, 700 by 2. These are various grades where the first number that 600, 400, 500, 450 that shows us the strength and the next number shows the elongation so 600 by 3 newton per mm square in this 600 is the strength and 3 is the elongation let us go to the next slide as we all know nodular iron is more flexible and elastic than other cast irons it is a it is a uh, part of a family of a cast iron white iron uh, ductile iron gray cast iron are the three main contingents in the cast iron family nodular cast iron is more flexible and elastic than other cast irons nodular iron has higher strength greater elongation and better resistance to impact than gray cast iron gray cast iron is mainly mainly uh, known for the impact properties that it have whereas ductile iron is known for its ductility the nodular iron family offers the design engineer a unique co combination of strength, wear fatigue, resistance, toughness, as well as excellent ductility characteristics. In all its grades, nodular iron exhibits mechanical properties that makes it an ideal material for mechanical and automotive parts. That is why in most of the automotive parts we now of this find ductile iron is going as a one of the important material. This is how the 3D picture of nodal looks like i got it from one of the net site these are the various grades of the uh, tile i am 400 by 12 400 by 15 450 by 10 500 by 7 550 by 6 600 by 3 700 by 2 these are the uh, we can say common grade or uh, popular grades in the ductile iron we normally produce in in this, as I have told you, 400, 450, 500 are the inside strengths, whereas the second is second number that is 12, 15, 10, and 7 are the elongation figures. Now let us go in detail with the grade. We can uh, divide it into two grades so normally ferritic grade, uh, in fact, into three grades ferritic grade, ferritic perlitic grade, and perlitic grade. In ferritic grade, we have 400 by 12, 400 by 15, and 450 by 10 are mainly a ferritic grades where perlite is not more than 25 to 30 percent and balance everything is ferritic. So it is more, more of a ferritic grade where we require uh, predominantly ferritic matrix. The hardness range is 130 to 180. In uh, case of 450 by 10, it may go to 190 or so. Achieving ferritic grade in ASCAS condition is a very big challenge as we all know because of the we have to control the cooling rate, we have to control the manganese, all the details we will see by, uh, in the further slides also. So achieving ferritic, ferritic grade in cast iron is a in ASCAS condition is a challenge as it depends on many things. Number one, perlitic promo, uh, promoting elements like manganese, copper, these elements are promoting perlite and the presence of these elements will uh, restrict ferritic uh, structure and promotes perlite structure. So we will not able to get ASCAS ferritic matrix. So we have to reduce, we have to control these particular elements manganese and copper in the metal to achieve 100% or fully ferritic grade. Manganese should be less than 0.15 to 0.2 to achieve uh, ferritic grade. Copper should be as low as possible probably less than 0.05 to have fully ferritic structure. 
we have to avoid uh, tin addition of tin or tin material because it will promote the perlite. So any risers or any scrap or any uh, rejections, any castings with tin, if you add to the ferritic grade, it will hamper your matrix and you will not able to get fully ferritic matrix in as such condition because tin will promote perlite. Next slide. Grades and matrix in ductile iron. Cooling grade is another important factor in achieving ferritic structure. Slow cooling will always uh, require to achieve ferritic structure. Your knockout time will help you to achieve ferritic structure. If you uh, do your knockout below 45 50 minutes, it will promote perlite, will not give you 100% ferritic structure. You have to little bit improve, increase your knockout time, maybe one hour to achieve fully ferritic structure. Again, it depends on your casting section thickness as well because if you are having a uh, section thickness, heavier section thickness, you have to uh, increase that uh, cooling rate more because it will not get uh, cool as early we are thinking. So, cooling rate is another factor. We have to control the cooling rate to achieve fully ferritic structure. Apart from this section thickness, uh, also contribute to the matrix as I told you the section thickness is an important thing if casting is thinner in wall it is very difficult to get fully ferritic structure it is thicker in wall you will get more ferritic structure so this is another area where we have to see uh, the section thickness of casting and when we accept anything from your customer in customer specific requirement you have to see the wall thickness you have to see whether you can achieve that ferritic structure in ASCAS condition with the desired uh, desired desired properties with the uh, chemi chemi chemistry and uh, charge mix you are proposing, and then you have to confirm the customer. Many times it happens that because of uh, wall thickness is low, we are unable to achieve ferritic structure uh, in the casting. Good practice of inoculation also plays an important role in maximize ferric percentage. Inoculation ka रोल बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है यहां पर जितना अच्छा इनोक्लेशन आप करेंगे जितना बेहतर इनोक्लेशन करेंगे जितना आपकी इनोक्लेशन की एफिशिएंसी बढ़ेगी उतना आपका फेराइट बढ़ेगा सो इनोक्लेशन इज अ गुड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ इनोक्लेशन इज नॉट ओनली क्वालिटी ऑफ इनोक्लेशन द प्रैक्टिस दैट यू फॉलो इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि आप बराबर स्ट्रिप पे डाल रहे कि नहीं डाल रहे इसका साइज क्या है देन व्हेन यू स्टार्ट पुटिंग अप इनोक्लेशन वी एंड वेंट अप विद इनोक्लेशन प्रैक्टिस दैट ऑल दीस थिंग्स विल डेफिनेटली uh help you in achieving good ferritic structure so good practice of inoculation also plays an important role in maximize ferrite percentage ferritic grade can be produced from perlitic grade by doing annealing which involves slow cooling of casting after heating ek aur tarika hai lekin normally people are not doing it because it, it is it, it involves cost pehle jab raw material utna acche tarike ka nahi tha jab crc controlled manganese ka nahi mil raha tha jab spectros nahi the और हमें पता नहीं होता था कि मैंगनीज कितना है एट दैट टाइम पीपल आर डूइंग दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दैट इफ हार्डनेस इज मोर इफ दे आर नॉट अचीविंग द ग्रेड इन एसकास कंडीशन फ्रिटिक ग्रेड इन एसकास कंडीशन दे टेक हेल्प ऑफ हीट ट्रीटमेंट एनालिंग साइकिल टू कन्वर्ट इट इनटू फ्रिटिक ग्रेड बट नाउ विद द गुड रॉ मटेरियल अवेलेबल गुड कंट्रोल्स ऑन रॉ मटेरियल इंस्पेक्शन एंड स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर अवेलेबल यू कैन चेक द मैंगनीज यू कैन चेक द कॉपर बिफोर यू tap the metal you can understand what is the content of manganese and copper and you can adjust it accordingly so iske baad abhi ferritic grade as cast mein banda aasan ho gaya you can make it easily if you have a better quality control in your melting shop this is a micro structure of fully ferritic iron you can see a fully ferritic structure here second is where the matrix is ferritic perlite where ferrite be available hai aur perlite be available it may be 40 60 or 60 40 it's a combination of ferrite ferrite and perlite together so that is around 500 by 7 grade we can say is the ferritic perlite grade where 40 60 or 60 40 proportion is available the hardness range required here is 180 to 230 manganese requirement is around 0.3 to 0.5 similarly copper 0.3 to 0.5 again depending on your casting section thickness your cooling rate and of course the uh, 
uh, feeding here knockout cooling time is important agar aap isko thanda cool karoge isko knockout time zyada rakhoge to you will again reduce per light or fill light bad jayega to isko knockout time control karna important hai you have to knock out it within 45 50 minutes you can say maximum 1 hour 1 hour se aage jayenge to aapka periodic percentage badhega periodic structure aapka kam ho jayega so you have to control your knockout time to avoid per light promotion this is the microstructure microstructure in dikhaya hai perlitic structure ka next is perlitic grade that is 600 by 3 and 700 by 2 are mainly known as perlitic grades yahan par basically 100% perlite uh, sorry uh, 80 to 90% perlite is acceptable 70 to 90% perlite is acceptable and hardness range goes from 210 to 270 yahan par aap thoda bahut addition of tin can be done because you have to get more perlitic structure and uh, you cannot use manganese more than 0.6 because again it will add to carbides it will add to your machinability effect so yahan par grid section thickness ke hisab se aap thoda bahut is tin ka istemal kar sakte hai lekin tin ka istemal karte samay kaafi dhyan dena padega kyunki tin is एलिमेंट विच इज गोइंग जो बढ़ता जाता है और आपको बाद में उसके जो निगेटिव इफेक्ट है छिड़के टेंडेंसी बढ़ाता है मशनेबिलिटी हेम्पर करता है तो इसके लिए थोड़ा हमें सावधान रहना पड़ेगा कि टीन का इस्तेमाल कम से कम करें यू टू फोकस मोर हियर इन टर्म्स ऑफ कॉपर यू कैन यूज कॉपर आपके पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट विच विल गिव यू गुड मशनेबिलिटी गुड पर लाइफ स्ट्रक्चर This grade can be achieved by heat treatment called normalizing. Your casting is cool suddenly after heating. This is the matrix for six hundred by three grade. We can see lot of perlite is there, and just uh, outside norul we can see uh, ferrite which is not more than twenty percent. So this is the structure for six hundred by three grade matrix. कंपेरिजन ऑफ भी हमने जो भी अभी चार तीन मैट्रिक्स uh, देखे उसका कंपेरिजन दिया है आप देख सकते हैं एक ही शीट में मैंने इसीलिए देखा है आपको समझ में आएगा कि फेराइट पर लाइट का डिफरेंस कैसे इजिली हम समझ सकते हैं दिस इज अनदर टाइप ऑफ मैट्रिक्स इट इज कॉल एज कार्बाइड we doesn't want carbide it is not required to us because it will hamper the machinability it will hamper your uh, machining to light be hamper karega so carbide are not required phase of matrix it reduce machinability higher chromium over inoculation high residual magnesium and of course fast cooling will promote formation of carbide तो आपको क्रोमियम कम कंट्रोल करना है इनोक्यूशन प्रॉपर डेल डालना है मैग्नेशियम रेसिडल मैग्नेशियम है उसको कंट्रोल करना है एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली आपको कोलिंग रेट को भी कंट्रोल करना है देन ओनली यू कैन अवॉइड फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कार्बाइड कार्बाइड इज हेम्परिंग यूर मस्टेबिलिटी एंड रिड्यूसिंग यूर टू लाइफ एनलिंग ऑफ डक्टाइल आयन जैसे मैंने पहले आपको बताया कि इसलिए पुराने जमाने में इट वॉज बिन डन की आपका हार्डनेस नहीं मिला तो यू कैन कन्वर्ट दैट इन टू फेरिटिक ग्रेड बाई यूजिंग एनेलिंग 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 इज दी हिटिंग ऑफ द कास्टिंग टू सर्टन टेम्परेचर से नाइन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी और नाइन हंड्रेड थर्टी एंड देन स्लोली कूलिंग हिट एंड देन इट द मैट्रिक्स चेंजेस फ्रॉम फर्लेटिक टू फेरिटिक सो दैट इज एनेलिंग साइकिल Ductile manufacturing process. Ductile manufacturing process is very interesting. It is it required a lot of discipline. This is very important thing. I think my first slide I missed today is discipline because in any of the welding practices or any of the foundry practices we need the thing discipline. Discipline is very important. Without discipline we cannot achieve any anything in the foundry. In foundry we have to. very disciplined in our uh, process control very disciplined in our raw material inspection very disciplined in our, our regular uh, activities so here in ductile and production we need a very high level of discipline 
जैसे भी हम आगे जाएंगे वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ डिसिप्लिन वी रिक्वायर एंड प्रॉपर कंट्रोल ऑन प्रोसेसेस एंड चार्जेस डिसिप्लिन प्रोसेस कंट्रोल एंड चार्जेस के ऊपर अगर हम कंट्रोल करेंगे तो वी कैन एबल टू मेक गुड डक्टाइल आयन कास्ट so this is what i was talking about the discipline chart mix let us start with the chart mix uh, in ductile iron uh, the most important factor is uh, in making of ductile iron is the uh, selection of chart mix and the scrap this is very important the selection means basically we are normally using csa and home returns and rejections because normally we are not using pigan because the ductile and red pigan is not available most uh, in most of the part of india so we are normally not avoid, uh, not using it so crc home scrap and rejection are the major uh, things we are using so control on crc and home scrap is very important here i am not going to detail of that control because uh, we are not talking about raw material inspection here but just to uh, conclude i will say In CRC, you have to control the manganese. You have to control the bundle size. You have to control uh, inside bundle material like MS is there or some other plating is there. You have to control that things very to the high degree because if something goes from the bundles, it is very difficult to control the whole melt composition at the end of the uh, bath because you you cannot dilute those. Kind of things. So control on CRC is very important, particularly manganese, chromium, this kind of, and some of the trace elements which are uh, present in the various scrap material. So you have to control CRC for that. Uh, your raw material inspection uh, method should be good, and most importantly, you can uh, continue with a reliable source of supply. That is very very important because if your supplier is reliable, he is consistent. you are not changing it uh, frequently you will get uh, consistent material consistent quality of material and that will help you in producing consistent uh, result in the ductile and melting practices if you are changing it frequently then definitely there will be change in the quality of scrap and it will also give you lot of shocks during the melting so consistent uh, supply quality is very important home return you have to have a good process control in uh, segregation of uh, home returns then uh, proper transportation proper uh, uh, you can say pro proper segregation of home return in the form of grades jaise ki 600 by 3 hai 400 by 15 hai you cannot able cannot uh, allow them to mix up agar 400 by 15 aur 600 by 2 mix ho jayenge to fir आपको मुश्किल आएगी क्योंकि अगर चार सौ बाई पंद्रह में छह सौ बाई तीन के राइजर जाते हैं तो मैंगनीज का फर्क बढ़ेगा आपको फेराइट नहीं मिलेगा सो यू हैव टू कीप देम सेपरेटली एंड दैट मैकेनिज्म यू हैव टू डेवलप इन योर फॉर्म वे फॉर बेटर कंट्रोल एंड बेटर क्वालिटी कंट्रोल इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कीप होम स्क्रैप एंड रोजेक्शन सेपरेट ग्रेड वाइज एंड रिड्यूस ऑल आई एडिशन उससे क्या होगा आपका ऑल एडिशन कम होगा क्योंकि अगर छह सौ बाई तीन का राइजर आप छह सौ बाई तीन को इस्तेमाल करेंगे तो डेफिनेटली रिक्वायर लॉट लेस कॉपर एंड लेस मैंगनीज हमने ये सब चीजें चार्ज कैलकुलेशन के सेमिनार में वेबिनार में देखी है कि कितना ज्यादा फर्क पड़ता है हाउ मच इज कॉस्ट सेविंग इज देयर इन दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग इफ वी रिड्यूस दिस काइंड ऑफ सेग्रीगेशन करते हैं और इस मिक्सिंग अगर रिड्यूस करते हैं तो कितना फर्क पड़ता है हमने उस दिन देखा था नेक्स्ट थिंग दिस इज दिस काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटी यू कैन डू यू कैन पुट ऑन नंबर ऑन द राइजर्स ऑन द स्लीव ऑन द रनर बार सो दैट दे कैन बी separated and kept separately charge sequence crca you can use gpc or carburizer but uh, gpc gives a better result carburizer has uh, higher melting point it takes more time to get dissolved so you, you just charge there are chances that your carburizer will not give 100% recovery when you take the sample and then after what what will happen you will not get consistent result so it is better to use gpc though it is uh, little bit costly it will give you better results in terms of quality recovery and you can avoid late additions as well so crc gpc again some crc and on horizon so there will there is no much uh, criticality in the charge sequence because we are using very less material very less uh, form of material here so 
there is no much criticality the criticality is in cast iron where you are using number of types of material in cast iron uh, one note kept here again to keep 2025 kg crc aside to avoid late addition of gpc as i always tell you that always try to avoid late addition of carbon by just keeping some crc away Base metal chemistry. What should be the base metal chemistry? The carbon should be 3.7 to 4 percent. Final carbon 3.4 to 3.7 percent after the treatment. Silicon you can keep 1.4 to 1.7, and final you can get 4.2.4 to 2.7 after the treatment and post inoculation. Manganese. Uh, if you have to keep 0 0.5, I always again I will say that. Uh, you have to add only at the end because uh, as I told you in last few seminars also, uh, if you add manganese early and your risers content or your CRC content little bit more manganese, you will get higher manganese and then to reduce manganese, you again have to add CRC and then again add to add some carbon to add the CRC. The so whole uh, cycle you have to run. So this is better. You can add it at the end or you can just at 50 percent at the initial stage and balance 50 percent you can add, add at the end by just watching your bath manganese so this is very important uh above 0.5 uh, manganese definitely will have a machinability issues and carbide issues so do not allow yourself to cross 0.5 uh, percent of manganese instead I, as i told you you can increase a little bit of copper it will give you good machinability it will, it will give you uh, fine pearl, uh, fine perlite as well as it will give good perlite structure. So and it will avoid carb uh, carbide formation. So manganese and copper mesh ratio you have to maintain very uh, in a good sense. Sulfur must be below 0 0.025 because again if it is increasing then uh, your magnesium will first attack the sulfur and then your magnesium recovery will be less. Same thing we have seen in our uh, charge calculation sheet also the magnesium recovery depending on the bath sulfur and the final sulfur the difference so your bath sulfur is increasing your recovery will be less and whatever assumption you are making for addition of magnesium will get failed so you have to control your sulfur level that is very very important phosphorus as low as possible preferably not o5 should be the phosphorus you have to keep so this is the final chemistry what I am uh, recommending to you copper you can keep up to 0.3 to 0.7 tin maximum 0.01 you can keep for 700 by 2 grade or some grades where perlite is required and you are not able to get the perlite because of section thickness or because of some issues but try to avoid tin as much as possible because it is very very difficult to control if it gets segregated in the uh, your all the elements do not keep chromium more, more than 0.05 as I told you just now. Chromium more than 05 will produce uh, give rise to carbides, and these carbides are very strong and very dense carbides. It is very difficult even with the heat treatment. So you cannot eliminate them even after heat treatment. So uh, try to avoid chromium as low as possible. Try to keep it, keep it as low as possible, and for that best solution is. Avoid mix up of cast iron risers into agent analysis. This is very important. Or avoid uh, more of the bath metal of cast iron in HM. So, if your bath metal is more in HM, it will increase your chromium level. Or your uh, risers got mixed up with the HM risers, cast iron risers got mixed up with the HM risers, it will also give you carbide. So, avoid those things. So, next thing, charge good practices. What are the good practices? As I told you, Keep 25 kg CRC aside from the from that of the charge mix so that you will avoid the addition of late addition of carbon. This will give some good fusion to percentage of carbon. Always do charge calculation once in a shift based on your charge mix and verify the addition of carbon as an alloy as per standard. I already have shared with you the charge calculation sheet in Excel. You can follow it in your mobile and you can do it on the shop floor itself. So it's not required to go uh, go into the office and do it on the uh, PC. You can do it in your mobile as well. So I already pro provide that sheet to you. 
and it will help you definitely. The practice of 100% weighment of step and all that. This will help you especially in uh, controlling your carbon because if you put more CRC than expected, than calculated, then your carbon will go down. Again, you have to add carbon. So, uh, percentage of CRC AMS has to be 100% weight. All other materials we do with some other activity like Pigan we uh, Pigan have dealt with no kitchen number say, punch number, punch soft to Rokai Keko, 45 kg yoga. This is the same dalte, boring normally we put it by the Yogi uh, Hamari party ready here, who party is up to dalte, those party yoga, but the it may purchase kilo by that to do dice of yoga. This is the same usko, ginti kar there. Like an MS or CRC, we have to ensure that you weigh it on the Weighing scale hundred percent without any mistake. Even five kg here and there is also even one kg here and there is also not acceptable. So weighing of staff is very important. That will help you in uh, maintaining your chemistry, maintaining your lead additions. Then we go to metal inspection. Once metal is ready, take sample at around eighty percent of charging. Eighty percent charging ke baad aap sample nikal sakte ho. Balance 20% you can keep your runner risers, which are almost similar weight. You know what is So you can keep that around. And then uh, around 1350, you can take the parallel sample. Around 1450, you can take spectro sample. Carbon reading is more consistent. In ferro cup, that spectral sample is very important. If you have carbon consistency, so you have to follow the ferro lab. Spectro, it may give a uh, variable variations, variable results will come in the spectrometer. You uh, you can also make uh, in, the, in, the, in the at the end of the shift or in, at the start of the shift you can do uh, validation. Okay, my ferro lab is carbon is how much, my spectro is carbon is how much. So, in this way, you will manage it once you have managed it. If you have managed it, then later on सिर्फ स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर के ऊपर भी काम चला सकते हैं। तो यू हैव टू वैलिडेट इट बिफोर वी यू गो अहेड। 